hello once again and welcome to Midweek Connect. Glad that you could join us. And I want to sort of change um, theme a little bit with Midweek Connect rather than it being just a big, intense 9, 10, 11, 12 minute Bible study, which is good. I want it to be more of a time where I as pastor connect with you as members of the church, as well as bringing a bit of a devotion into you. My title today is um, When You're in, change, in Chains, Change Lanes. When you're in chains, change lanes. Well, I'll mention that in a in a in a moment. i you know I've been really thinking to myself how God speaks and the ways in which He speaks to us. And what I decided to do um, over a year ago, about a year, a year and a half ago, on a trip to Tenerife, um, is buy a book, a little notebook, and write down all the things that God says to me through word and spirit. So anything he says to me through the word, uh, I write down and anything he says to me, um, you know, literally in, in my spirit or any time through somebody else, uh, I write down. And in this particular book, um, I've got all those things in here. And it's really, really good to have a journal because it's a journal of your personal relationship with God. And it can be absolutely um, uh, vital. I'm, like for instance, I was in a particular place uh, here, Friday the 1st of the 11th, 19, um, and I wrote down that I saw a man in an airport, um, you know, uh, it's at Stansted Airport, coming back from Tenerife actually, um, lifting his child up and carrying him along. And I felt that God said to me inside, that's what I want you to do to other people. And that's what we should be doing as Christians. And that's just a little bit of an example of how God speaks. I also Allow God to speak through the word. God speaks in so many ways through the word. And I believe quite often you'll start in the word. You'll, you'll read something in the Bible like Romans 8, Romans 12, and God will speak to you personally. I want to challenge you um, through this turmoil at the moment, this turmoil, turmoil we're in, the lockdown, um, and everything else is associated with it, to allow God to speak to you every day. He will do and he can do. And just might just be picking up your Bible in the morning, praying and saying, God, speak to me through your word and reading something. Read something in Proverbs, Psalms, something in the letters, in the Gospels, and just see what God is saying to you through that. It's a valuable thing. And then onwards, afterwards, just allow God to speak further through your spirit. Guess what? If you did that tomorrow morning, he would uh, speak to you with something new that you wouldn't get had you chose not to do it. Please don't get, get cynical thinking, oh, I've done this before, uh, because he might speak to you in, in so many ways, and probably will do if you allow him to. So for the next five or six minutes, I want to share a devotion called uh, If You're In Chains, Change Lanes. Um, you know, it's it's incredible because we um, uh, we have friends in, in the island of Guernsey and they have just gone back into a severe lockdown again because COVID has got in there. So kind of everywhere now, we're just relying on God, saying, God, just help us through tomorrow. Help us with this, help us with that. And that's actually a good thing. So don't worry. The title's If In Chains, Change Lanes. I want to read from um, Philippians 1, just 11 verses, and then bring some illustration out of it, which I believe God's saying to me, at the moment, I mentioned just about how God speaks to us through the Bible. And um, well, at the moment, um, God spoke to me through this. And I, I trust he will challenge you and encourage you as well over the next few minutes. Philippians 1, Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. So, so, so Paul's writing this letter to early Christians in a place called Philippi. And he said, it's to all of you and the church leaders, um, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I have just read that. and I feel so encouraged by just reading it. You see what I'm talking about, about reading the word. It's incredible. Verse 7, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whenever I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how long I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in, in knowledge and depth in, and insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness, that comes through Christ Jesus to the glory and praise of God. Very simply, 
Here is a group of Christians in the beginning of the Christian era, and they are going through persecution. They are going through rejection. Christianity is new and nobody likes it. Lots of people do, but a lot of people don't. The authorities don't. And Paul's being persecuted and they're being persecuted. So, but what Paul has decided to do, now Paul was one of the Christian leaders, decided to do is when he's in chains, change lanes. In other words, he's saying, yeah, we're going through this, but there's hope in God. There's hope in Jesus Christ. And no matter what we are facing, which is medical or political or any type of persecution, there is hope in Jesus Christ. And see, they've, they've taken this decision to serve. They've taken this decision to start with, to step up and be known as somebody who follows Jesus Christ. They, they introduce themselves, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. That is their main introduction. Many, many years ago at a place I worked, in the office I worked, a big picture was taken of everybody in the office and, and there's a picture of me in there. And some years later, it found its way on Facebook, on the internet, and everyone was tagged. Now in this office, I didn't really, and this is my problem, I didn't really, you know, say much about my Christian faith, and I should have done. But when it was on Facebook, names were given, like tag names were given to the, the pictures of the people in there. I was called Happy Clappy. In other words, they, they, were, they were aware that I was a Christian, and my main identity, even before my name, was as a Christian. And my goodness, isn't that a good thing to be known as, as, po as long as it's positive? Um... And they, so they had this identity that they were Christians. And even though they had persecution, they had long-term prayer goals. In all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy. So, you know, they're in the chains, but the changing lanes inside their head, the changing lanes from despair to, to joy, they're looking at long-term prayer goals and say, even though it's like this, Maybe if they were here in this century, they'd say, even though we're in this lockdown, even though we're restricted by this, the church will be mighty. My family will do this again. My job will do this again. The people in my church who I love in my house group or so-and-so will do this again. And they became um, evidence for the gospel um, themselves. In verse 7, it is right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart. And whenever I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. He is in chains. It feels like we are in chains at the moment. But I'm just learning time and time again to daily read God's word and allow it to enable me to be different. And even though I'm in chains, to change, let change lanes in my head and be different something different and this group of early christians were something different they they were known um for being something different but he, uh, in summing up he was in chains but he decided to use that to advance the gospel you know god can use your chains in the most amazing ways god can use your situation in the most incredible way and i want to say to you right now as we draw this particular um, broadcast to a close. I dare you to pick up the Bible each day and I dare you to sit there and allow God's Spirit to speak to you. Allow the Bible to speak to you and write down what he says and talk to him about your depression. Talk to him about your relationship problems. Talk to him about those disgusting temptations you have that you can't talk to anyone about. Talk to him about your financial worries. Tell him everything. Be with him. Allow his spirit to cleanse you. Realize what his word says about you. And when you're in chains of any kind, change lanes. Change lanes and, and go from the lane of despair to the lane of joy and hope like Paul and his compatriots did here. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. And my prayer for you is that you draw closer to Jesus, irrespective of what the news brings forward, but you become evidence for the gospel yourself and, and you discover the deeper joy of knowing God's Holy Spirit and getting deeper into his word. God bless you and have a good week and we'll see you again on Sunday. Thank you.